Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to an exciting episode of the Accelerate Podcast. I'm Charles Woodruff, and I'm joined by Right by Russ. Is is that it? But right by Russ on on what's that TikTok and Cypress Car Connection on uh, Instagram. Welcome. I haven't seen you. In a, I haven't seen you in a bit. Actually, since this last weekend. Yeah, it's, yeah, we're, yeah, it has been, uh, gosh, like three or four days now. That's a rare occurrence to have that kind of a break. But I, but I was I, going, I was actually going through the old cat, the old podcast we did, the first episode, and it was actually almost exactly a year ago we did it. Ooh. Yeah. So I think a lot has changed since then. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. A lot has changed. We're, I guess I'm the unofficial official educational person or, Teacher the, of the, uh, and instructor of uh, of accelerate classes now. That's education director. Is that what I am? Is, is that sure? A I mean, it, sounds, it sounds good for this episode. <laughs> yeah, we're, remember you got Cyber's Car Connection, you got Right by Russ, and you got Cap Russ, and now you got Director Russ. So why not? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's see what all do we have here. Again, this is me and yours second podcast together. We did one or two more other two other ones last year, but we're definitely looking forward this year. That's one of our things. We want to be able to put more interviews out there, more contacts, more information out there about automotive education. That's what we're all about here. We still have our website. If you go to it, that's accelerateeducation.org. Uh, A-C-E-L-E-R number eight, accelerateeducation.org. And go on there and find out all the stuff that we've been doing last year and kind of some of the stuff that we're looking to do this year, as well as we're a nonprofit. So any anything helps. So if you could go on there and donate or be able to go on there, maybe even join the team, become a volunteer. We need that all the time. If you guys didn't see it, we ended up doing a show at the Peterson Museum. And the special guests, it was a cars and coffee style drive in, but the special guests were Donut Media and the cruise in. And I don't think anyone ex- understood or knew what was going to happen once Donut Media got involved. There was definitely a ton of people in that parking structure. Yeah, yeah that, it, it was unbelievable. We were. I'm thinking half the parking spaces are going to be full and maybe one or two of them would show up with Donut Media, but they were, they were full on. Everybody that was involved with the organization was there. There was, I can talk, go over the top, but I'd say somewhere between 600 to 800 cars between the top level and the bottom level. And it was everything. It was trucks. It was they had Lexus. They had this hero things, which is crazy. That new Japanese kind of movement where they're doing pipes coming out the back and out the side and flares and just crazy paint big turbos a lot of boost yeah. oh, there was the exhaust that was what eight <laughs> pipes coming out the back like a organ <laughs> you know what they call that i I, I did I, they call that a peacock exhaust a peacock exhaust look yeah. at that you gotta look see that, that. If you didn't learn anything, you learned something today. The peacock exhaust. Exactly. And it's, gosh, I wish I remembered the name of the group, the club that was there. Just give them a shout out. These guys, they got it together. They're building lots and lots of interesting stuff. That was the very interesting part of that group, that uh, the people that came out there. It's that demographic. It's the ones that we're reaching to. It's the kids. It's the youth. They're into the JDMs. They're into the older uh, vehicles. We say older, but they're 20 or 30 years older. And to them, they're vintage. So they love taking these cars, doing different things to them. I actually saw a car there that had a set of spinners on it. (laughs) That was like high tech when we were (laughs) were growing up. (laughs) Taking it back. Yeah, no, it was. I, I was amazed how big the import influence and not just import as far as JDM, but it was the Euro market too. It, you didn't seem to, before it was back in the oldie times, muscle car era, Chevrolet, Ford, Chrysler, they all had their cars, but it was still American. But there was European cars and there was Japanese cars and there was 
the Korean stuff that you'll see, some Kia stuff there. It was, it really, it never seemed to end. Yeah. And we actually even had some electric, had a cyber truck there, which was spray painted. Someone spray painted on it. Yeah. Yes, that they did. They graffitied painted. it. Man, that was, a, that's, yeah. that was graffiti art. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, go, go ahead. Yeah. You're talking about the electric cars. I think on your site, your Instagram or TikTok, you did a, a share with that one of that Lexus with the lit lit up wheels inside of the inside of the wire spoke wheels. Oh yeah. yeah. It yeah. wasn't on the ground. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was a different thing. Low riders, high riders, fast riders. <laughs> Heck, I, I can't keep up. I don't know what all these guys are calling themselves now, but they're definitely <laughs> car culture people. Yes. And you felt that vibe there that they were there to see more, to see what everyone's doing. And they're not coming in with high-end Ferraris and exotics and things like that. They're coming in with sometimes just beat up cars yeah. and they're so excited. They're in the enthusiast. They're just there to soak it all in. And who knows how many of them came to see these cars, but their builds are at home on, on blocks waiting for their ideas when they get home and what they're going to do. So it was was very cool to see. And then it was really cool to see all of this happening at the Peterson museum. Yeah. I I heard the event took a little while to sell out though, for the spots in the meet at the, at the show. What was that? What was that time frame? Yeah. Like 47 minutes. (laughs) Something like that. Yeah. And there was just people there hoping that somebody didn't show to fill that hole. Yeah, no, it was, and they did a great job. It was organized. There wasn't a traffic jam. Yeah, that that kind of amazed me that there was no, no traffic jam at any point. And even when they were doing the, all the donut people that were doing all the, the signing, they'd be walking around and somebody would walk up and ask for an autograph on a T-shirt or a poster, and they'd sign up. Before you know it, there's a line of a hundred people, <laughs> lined up behind them, just loving what they do. And I didn't really. It, it didn't become reality until I actually saw the way people react to Donuts' whole program. It, it, it was, they are, they're the, in the forefront right now of keeping the auto enthusiast alive. Yep. That was really cool to see. We ended that show. I said we had a really great time, met a lot of great people, had some kids sign up and stuff. So we look forward to something like that again in the future, especially with, with Peterson. But I want to switch gears a little bit. And kind of talk about our, our little meat and potatoes of our program, yeah. which is the, the education, the this piece where we're building it. We're building it to a point where we can get a kid into our class. I say kid, but young adult into our class and they can learn the basics, the fundamentals and get right into a job. Where are you with automotive training today? You've been training for how many years? I've been Gosh, I've been doing some sort of mechanical thing for almost 50 years. I've been working on cars. I worked on motorcycles for 10 years before I worked on cars. So my mechanical background, once again, is about 40 years. Oh, gosh, 50 years. But where I'm at with it is just watching the whole transition of one to the other. It's just really up to the 1970s. Cars weren't really much different mechanically than a Model A. The brakes got a little better. The cooling systems, they started adding some things. I was already starting to work on cars by the late 70s. And so when they transitioned to computers, they said, oh, no, computers. People taking out light bulbs for check engines and putting a piece of tape over it. And, oh, it'll never last. These catalytic converters are lighting the freeway on fire. It was crazy keep going and technology has gone from what was a basic automobile to now a really incredibly sophisticated uh, thing where it has multitude of modules computers are controlling things electronics everything on it everything that you touch has some sort of module that controls what it does so it's mm-hmm. gone a long ways of course we're still transitioning we're looking at fuels right now fuel is a thing and electricity is the fuel that Everybody seems to think it's the future, but you talk to some of the other people that are big in the, uh, within the industry and we're looking at hydrogen. 
as a great possibility as a, as a fuel, the Mirai, that's a new car. It's not a, it's not a, it's not something you'd get up on a Sunday morning to take for a drive, but it's a decent looking car and it's, it does a pretty good job. The electric thing, that's, that's going to be around California, especially, but it doesn't change much. People think this transition from gasoline or whatever they're running to electric is a big deal. All you're really changing is the power supply. It's just not a big deal. You're going from a gasoline engine to a, to a electric motor. Everything else is the same. It's still got to transmit the power to the wheels. It's still got to have brakes. It's still got to have struts and shocks and tires. And you still want those cool leather seats and that, yeah, 45 position, I don't know, <laughs> shift knob, all these things, air conditioning. So vehicles are still need everything that they needed before. You still got to service the power plant, whether it be electric or a mechanical one. Now, electric motors don't wear like a, a gasoline engine, but you still have a cooling system to service and you still have windows that don't roll up and down once in a while. You still mm-hmm. get a, a flat, you still get a flat tire. You still get bad struts and shocks. They, they still need paint. There's just still the same everything. It's not like they reinvented the wheel. They just put a, a new center on it. And I definitely think going forward, the biggest hurdle for each one of those is going to be the ability to be able to charge your car, get the hydrogen, or get gas. So obviously gas has that beat, has all of those beat by a mile as far as being able to get that, but everything else is starting to build up too. And we're trying to figure out ways to get better at it and get more. But I keep hearing, I'll hear the bad examples of electric and someone got stranded, but then I'll hear the good examples where people did a trip all the way to Mammoth on a, yeah. on a, in a Tesla, did two charges, Got to Mammoth, charged at the hotel, everything was fine. You can hear both sides of it, um, of the argument when you talk to people. It's cool because it's now coming down to the point where it's going to be up to the consumer to decide what do they want to do. Yeah, in California, we're really pushing it. It's a state thing. Uh, a lot of the other states, and I'm going to use this, the Chicago car show, which is the biggest one in the world. I was watching a special on that and their big thing was that's the first time in history that Tesla has really brought a car, brought vehicles out to events to promote their vehicles. Um, the whole thing was, as uh, Elon Musk's deal was that he, there was no need to promote Tesla. It sold itself. Mm-hmm. Now you have a lot of other cars on the market, but the big deal about being in the, um, the Midwest is the weather. Um, What's going to, what are they, what is going to be the effect on batteries over a length of time? So they're shying away from the, the electric car until they are assured that the salt isn't going to come off the road and rust through the straps and the battery falls out on the ground. This is just, that's all I'm, I'm just telling you what I saw. I, I, I don't know how much truth it is to it. It sounds good, right? I mean, you see cars, pictures of cars in Chicago and the fenders. You could stick your head through the fender to check the tire and hey, why not? But we're we're gonna see what happens. But when it when we talk about automotive training, what do you see in your years of experience how that has changed? Did we start out with just books? I was joking with somebody at the show the other day, and we used to get that big manual on each particular model car, and that was like your Bible as far as how to fix that car. And now there's so many other data ways to be able to get that information. The easiest, obviously, is YouTube. (laughs) But but you have like actual, in the mechanic world, you have stuff like that. So what have you seen that has been new or something is a really great positive thing in in the training side? As far as training itself, the the education of it, or looking up repair procedures for something, which... which... Yeah, it's just how, I don't know, say easier or how much better it is, how much faster it is to teach something now with some of the tools. I know you use online, you use some other things here and there that is a totally different thing than we did 20 years ago. 
Oh yeah, I'm I'm big on this. Is just my personal way of doing things. I'm big on using anything you can. If you have a cell phone and you can look something up and, and come up with the procedure or at least a process, we can go from there. You still have to go through the training though. If you go in, you're talking about inspecting brakes and brake pad thickness. I'm just using this as an example. You can look at the manual and it says the pads replace them at a millimeter and a half, which is a good number. Now, that's a solid number for all brake pads. But at a millimeter and a half, if I don't know where to measure, if I don't know what a millimeter and a half looks like, or I don't know how to access the pad, move the caliper out of the way, I'm not really going to be able to do anything. So watching a video is good to about 75% of what you need to do. But you really need some hands-on. You have to have a live live lab with vehicles that, that you can practice becoming a little more proficient, a lot more proficient yeah. in, in, where, in the repair area you're trying to, to work with. Well, it was cool. And over SEMA, when we went, we went there and actually PRI also, VR, a gentleman's wearing a VR headset and he's spray painting a car and looking at the actual program that the company is using, they can actually tell how well you did your spread, how much product you used. And when I talk to people about those things, they shrug and that's not real. How can you do that? But what's really cool is, yeah, it may not be hundred percent real, but it's not, you don't have to use any product and it's getting people in reputation reps. They're getting reps in to be able to do it. Yeah. And I've only seen a little bit of it and the movement with it and of course, if anybody that's seen it, I look ridiculous swinging around and turning something with their hands and whatever they're doing. And I've done it. And I think it's it appears to be lifelike. I think it has a place. There's car manufacturers that will go out and train their technicians with virtual reality. But they already have mechanical skill sets. It's if you don't have any mechanical skill sets, the only way you're going to do it is to take a grassroot, and I'm going to call it grassroot because that's what it is, type of class, nuts and bolts, tires, wheels, physically taking things off of a vehicle and replacing them. That's it, it's a must. It's the only way that you're going to, to really get that the real feel for something that needs a repair. Yeah, definitely. There's nothing that can replace that real, the realness, the actually doing it. But it's cool. And coming from the law enforcement side of it, we always talked about you do something a hundred times and now it becomes a habit. And if you're able to get on a VR headset and do it a hundred times on the VR headset, that's giving you that much more training, which now when you get hands on, you should be farther along and, and not take as long to do it. So definitely some interesting things that are coming up as well as you guys use as an electude. Yeah, we use a, an ebook called Electude, and it is, in my mind, it, it's it's the best one out there. You talk to another automotive teacher, and they're going to say, oh, no, they like CDX. Another good one out there is Auto Upkeep. It's a good entry-level program. It is it is something that'll get you pointed in the right direction for a career in automotive. And again, it goes back to, well, you don't have to have a book that only has that information on whenever it was printed. Now you have systems that are updating constantly, as well as giving you real life material, videos and things like that you can take a look at. So it's really cool uh, to be able to see this new technology out there. Yeah, or I, I and once again, you, you elect to, that's what I use. And I don't ever have a piece of paper from anything for any project, <laughs> everything's electronic. My students like it. They don't have to collect a bunch of uh, garbage in their backpacks. They do an assignment and it and it's graded automatically and it goes right into my system. Uh, it saves me a lot of time. Yeah, that's it allows more classroom time or it allows more hands-on time. Right. It, allows, it, allow, it does allow more time for you to uh, complete it. I come from the uh, green board days, chalkboard. You know, <laughs> the teacher got there and... That was writing something in cursive with a piece of chalk. And with the, uh, the chalk holder? 
that that's was right. like that was high tech when you got the chalk holder. And if you were the cool kid of the day, you got to you got to clean the board and <laughs> pound the erasers. That's days gone by. Very little writing for me on the board. If I want to put some up, I put electronic tutorial up and stop it where it needs to go. So it's just another another. But it, it's where the kids, the young adults, that's where they're going into the jobs yeah. they're going into. They're using that type of equipment. Gone are the days that everyone fills out a, a work order and it's all by hand and ripping the third copy and handing it to you. It's, it's all computerized in the majority of places. Just about any repair you do now, even the brake machines, the tire balancers, they have tire balancers. Now you set them on the on a rack, they lift them up, they put them on, you put the lock on it, it spins it down for you. And it does all the cal cal or the uh, calculations for you. You know where to put the weights. It's before you used to have to put on a little bubble balancer and it's doing a little tippy thing and you're sliding a little weight around here and there. It mm -hmm. wasn't very, it was better than nothing, but it really wasn't something. <laughs> so, yeah. That's cool. Like I said, I, we, we definitely look forward. We're going to add some pieces to our program like that that are going to help us out. But we're really excited to see this career fair you have coming up. Ooh. Yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about that. We're talking about all this new stuff. I'm sure we're going to see this on display at the Skill Challenge and Career Fair at Cypress College. Yeah, we actually host a Orange County High School Automotive Tech Tech Competition at the school. It's coming up March 13th. It is the it is to me it's the premier event in in Orange County. We're bringing the the ten best what we feel is the ten best schools there doing the the tech competition, and they're going to be doing they're going to be building electrical circuits. They're going to be doing di diagnosis with scan tools. They're going to be diagnosing component failures through the electrode system. They're going to be doing precision measurement, alignment angles. They're going to be figuring out a, a car why a car has a problem by reading the alignment angles. It's going to be a quite a deal. The local dealers association in Orange County has sponsored all the or the awards, the trophies. Mm -hmm. Gosh, we got different companies giving us different stuff to, for giveaways for the event. We'll have Snap-on tools for the first, second, and third place team. We've got hats and T-shirts and giveaways. And besides the competition going on, which is a big deal. There'll also be about another 25 students from each school, from each campus, that are going to be touring doing workshops. And the workshops can range from, oh, just how to be a good employee, the benefits of working at a dealership. Gosh, I'm trying to think of who else. But SEMA. SEMA will be there. SEMA is going to do one on their program and their education. SEMA will be there. Formula Drift. We're, we're looking for that final commitment. They said they're going to be there, but I'm hoping they'll do a workshop and Maybe just do some YouTube video. Just guys getting sideways. What do they call it? <laughs> Throwing it in. What's that? What's that? What's that? Send it or <laughs> send it. Send it. Yeah. Send it. <laughs> so just guys send it. it. Yeah. And they'll have a car display there, and we'll have a race in Porsche. And the Lions Museum is bringing out that uh, supposed to bring out a Forty Willys drag car, blown, crazy, old school looking racer at this thing. We'll have probably fifteen or twenty different car brands there, with representatives for the companies that are going to come out and. And talk to the students, talk with them. The Some of them will get job offers out of it. And some of them will get an idea as to where what they need to do to get that job offer. offer. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds Big, good. Well, we're going to be there. Yes. So we'll, have, we'll have our booth there set up. We'll have our uh, high-tech hydrogen car on display there. The, well, the Mirai. The, yeah, the ooh, 132 horsepower. <laughs> we're going to bring all of it. <laughs> we're bringing it all there. Uh, the event i don't know if we can mention it may it may get a little press so if they're interested in seeing a little more about it on the 12th there may be a little media coverage for it awesome. so yeah so those of you that watch the morning news on some of our particular stations on la stations look around man, maybe you'll see it but here's the problem you think it sounds like a really cool thing it's not open to the public you got to be invited. There's going to be about 450 students there, not to mention another 50, 60, 70 exhibitors there as far as people. So we just don't have the room. But if it's something you sound like the, maybe next year, 
I can be one of the exhibitors there, feel free to contact Accelerate and he'll get it to the right person or who knows, maybe Accelerate's got future plans of something of this magnitude. Taking it over, putting on a bigger show. There you go. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely like everyone listening, they can, it may maybe too far, Orange County may be too far to go for next year. But when you look around your area and you see these pop up, these are opportunities to go there and see the industry, see what's going on. And that way your kids or you or anybody that sees this can go in there and say, you know what? I, I want to get exposed to this and see what this industry has to offer. So definitely a, a really great time to do that. So well, we look forward all, to it. Yeah. And it's all about transportation. The event is mostly automotive, but we have a aviation program there. You want to be a pilot. You can do that. We got a collision program. You like pounding on fenders or working with some of the new stuff. We got a collision program there. So there's it's there's a lot to do in transportation. Yeah. My point is transportation is a really big area. Although automotive, you may only own one or two houses in your lifetime, but every five years you're probably gonna buy another car. Mm -hmm. not because you need it because you want it but they're even talking about down the road the next generation may not buy a car they may just use a car service you know they may uber everywhere they go but still something needs to be worked on whether it's their car the service car everything needs to be worked on that's one thing we tell everybody in the transportation world everyone's affected somehow yes you can't even order uh, DoorDash without it involving a vehicle that comes to your house. <laughs> so, you know, everything is, is involved. That's why we're trying to get the next generation into automotive. And with that kind of segues into our next class. Yes. So our next class is coming up. Lions Automobile Museum. We're doing our second class there. So it's starting March 19th. And it's going to run Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4.30 to 6.30 for six weeks. So we're looking for a youth 14 to 24 that want to come out and be able to get that starting spark in the automotive industry. I guess just real quick, what are some of the things we're looking to teach? We're going to start. We're going in with the assumption that you don't even know how to put air in a tire. And if you don't feel like you should, people don't ride bicycles like they used to. People don't don't do things like they used to. Mm. The assumption that starting is something as simple as that, a little bit of brake, a little bit of suspension, under hood, cooling systems, fans, belts, maybe a little bit about the fuel system on it, shocks, struts, engines, a little bit about the engines. Even though they may go away 20 years from now, there's still a need to be able to work on them. So we'll be dealing with... um, you know, modern engine technology. Engines are using currently something you would see in a 2023 or 2024 car. That Mm -hmm. type of technology, direct fuel injection, variable valve timing. And we're going to be doing things that are are relevant to uh, working at at a dealer. Timing chains, valve covers, removing the cylinder heads, torquing, fixing stripped holes, thread repair. We have quite quite a bit of material we're going to try to cover. In a very short amount of time. Yes, very short. Definitely our goal is to touch a lot of different points and be able to get them sparked into the industry to be able to want to come out and go to our longer classes, more in-depth classes, as well as either attending schools like Corpus College or other colleges in the area that and joining their two, two or three year programs to learn more. So we're definitely Wait. looking forward to it. Yeah, our goal is to get your interest, get you automotively um, better off than you were. Now, some of you may get to that point where you can get an entry-level job. That's not a guaranteed Mm -hmm. thing. It just depends on where you start. We have had students that have started, you know, that were pretty very surprising as to how much they knew. And we've had students that, once again, did not even know how to put air in a tire. And that's okay. Either way is good. But the ones that are advanced and we can give them, we can enhance their skill set. That's just a plus for them. It's going to make it that much easier for them to to land that job. And then, of course, the continuation on. If they want to to get into a a 
a program and they've got a corporate program in mind and maybe a community college offers it because community colleges are, you know, what they're doing right now and what they're charging, it's, it's hard not to, but you right. still, still need to find out if you're, if this is something you want to do. Yep. That's where we're, we're at. We have signed up already and we have several signed up for the class, but we still have a, a few more openings. So if you're interested, jump on our website, the accelerateeducation.org website and click on the upcoming class. You can sign up right there. We'll get your information and then we'll reach right back out to you and get you all set up for the next class. Having that after that particular class, moving into the summertime, we're going to be doing a second class or I'm sorry, another class at the Peterson Museum. And that's going to be a more, more hours involved. So it's going to be more of an up during the day class to help kids that are out of school and may have a, may want to have a place to go to hang out at the Peterson. So we're putting that class together. So stay tuned, watch our socials and our website for upcoming classes. But I guess, so the next part I want to, I always hear these terms coming out towards the end of the show, but we want to park the bus per se <laughs> for our show today. Um, where do we see the industry going uh, this year as far as our training, our, our education, as well as cars in general? I think we're going to stay with the fundamental area with a little bit of leading into the, what we'd call advanced. We go through, you know, tires, wheels, brakes, the underhood things, but build a student base. We're going to continue with the next level. We're going to get into, which is the majority of the problems now, things that are, you will grow with the class if you allow yourself to be that person. So I see internal combustion, still working with it a little bit. I know it's a swear word to a lot of people, but it's a real thing. It's going to be around for at least another 20 years. I see education staying with it's going to become more and more information in less amount of time satellite technology they're fixing cars from satellites now somebody's sending an upload and they're sending it to a car yep. but yeah no it's just going to keep going forward and some of you are going to say hey, you know what i like it i want to get into the race inside of it so we're if i was going to park the bus you know where i'd park the bus woody <laughs> I, Where would you park the bus, Russ? If, so if I was going to park the bus, I would park it at Long Beach on April 12th <laughs> for Formula Drift. Yes, Formula Drift. We have some exciting news coming up with that. We still haven't been able to really release it yet. Again, follow all of our handles. Our website, accelerateeducation.org. Let's put that back up there. And as well as all of our social media, which are all Accelerate LA. So you can go to our YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We even started a TikTok. Russ here is, is teaching us all about TikTok. Doesn't know a thing. <laughs> My whole yeah. 60 followers. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's a solid six. Yeah. Um, but we're follow us in those areas. See what this update's going to be. Again, we have Formula Drift, we have the Peterson Museum, we have our Lions class coming up in March. So we have some good stuff happening. Let's do this again. Let's do this more often so that we can continue. So we don't have to go so long and do these big, long updates. We can do something yeah. a little shorter. And then uh, maybe we'll even get some guests in, bring some of our friends, ah. start having them come in with us. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be exciting. Thanks for being here. And to everybody, thanks for listening. And now Russ is going to have his closing. This is Russ. I'm out.